Nick Shannon and today what we're going to try to attempt to do is build a 383 Chevy small block stroker motor using a box of old parts. As you can see here we have the old block that's been machined, kind of rough. We've got the old tin, we've got a box of parts, we've got the old heads, and we've got an old crank. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by cleaning the block, making sure that uh, everything is cleaned out and ready to assemble. Okay, what we're doing here is we're running a tap, a 3 8 tap, through all of our 3 8 holes. It's a very good idea to run a tap through all of your holes on the block just to make sure all the crap and rust and leftover cleaning garbage is cleaned out so you don't have any problems later on down the road. So here is our used crank that we got with our basket of parts. Supposedly, this thing was polished, but obviously you can tell, you can feel the grooves, just like on an old record, you can feel the grooves with your thumb. Usually you can barely feel them with your thumbnail, but this one you can feel with your thumb, and you can tell that the main journals are a little rough. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit this with some scotch Bright, clean it up, and we're going to plastic gauge it to make sure it's okay to go. So here you see we have a SCAT uh, brand steel crankshaft, and by looking at the numbers on the end, looked up the numbers to find out this is for a 350 block with a long stroke making it a 383. Um, as you can see by the pitting on the journals there's no way that this thing only has 10 hours on it as we were told by the dirt bag who sold us this engine. Something you'll notice on these bearings with supposedly only 10 hours on them is when you look at the back at the stamping you'll see that it actually is stamped 001 which means it's made for a crankshaft that has been ground down one thousandths of an inch so if these are the old bearings supposedly hopefully the new bearings that are thousandths under or over depending on how you look at it will fit if these were standard bearings you would see the letters STD and no they don't stand for what you think they do it's just short for standard So as you can see, these main bearings that we were supplied with are marked at one thousandths under or over, depending on which way you look at it, which means hopefully our main, our crank has been turned down on the mains to fit. We'll check that later with plastic gauge. The rear main bearings are pretty obvious on which one goes in the back of the block. The rest of the bearings here, if you forget which way they go, just remember to line up the oil holes with the bearings and on the block. When you put your bearings in, make sure you have the right side so the oil holes line up. Start with the alignment dowel there, push it in, like so. And after you have the bearing pushed in, you can line it up, make sure it's all the way down by lightly tapping on it until it bottoms out on the steel like that. Do not curve in this way, but you can keep it out or try and just keep it flat. So after you've done what you can with the crank, lube up your main bearings with a little assembly lube. And just make sure you smear those good so they cover well. So very carefully drop your crank in, nice and even. Make sure it spins fairly easy. And we're going to connect some end rods on here and some pistons and check the clearances. Now luckily for us, whoever tore this engine apart actually took the time to stamp the main caps. Here's the number two and so we know which order they go in. Sometimes these little stamps here, you'll see the arrow actually points towards the front of the motor. Sometimes you'll see knobs on there that have one, two, or three, four knobs on there. Um, sometimes they're stamped and numbered and sometimes you're just on your own. But look very closely, try and find the number stamped on everything and lay them out in order. Okay, what we've done is we've put two main bearing caps on the crankshaft on each end to hold the crankshaft in and we've put in one piston without the rings we cleaned and oiled the cylinders first and we just hung one rod on here so we can check our clearances and as you see it bolts in but since this is a stroker crank as we spin it around it's going to get really close on that side and as it comes up here towards the block you can see the uh, Tolerance is not quite what we want it to be. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to hang all these rods, mark them, and clearance it for our stroker crank. That extra quarter inch makes a big difference. Okay, we are going to hang our pistons and rods on the crank temporarily so we can check the clearance and mark the block so we can clearance the block on the stroker crank. So always start with a little bit of brake cleaner on the rag and wipe out the cylinder. You get the idea. After you clean the cylinder, use a little bit of engine oil. A little bit of engine oil on the rag and make sure you get the cylinder clean and lubed up with some oil with just a film of oil that keeps you from scratching up your nice newly machined cylinders and just as a side note you may want to invest in one of these little babies this is a socket specifically designed to fit on your crankshaft that will keep the uh, key from getting rounded off and you don't want that and it just makes it so much easier to turn So as you can see our stroker crank does fit inside the block but just barely. So what we want to do is we want to clearance these, this block a little bit to allow room for not necessarily rod stretch like people like to talk about. But keep in mind that anytime something gets hot it expands. So if the rod gets hot and expands a couple thousandths and the block gets hot and expands and grows a couple thousandths your 3000s clearance here now just became 1000s so just for an extra safety measure we're going to mark these spots on the block and just hit them a little lightly with a die grinder and you can see where we've clearanced the block for our rod throws just so we don't get anything hung up in there so nothing gets out of whack make sure you uh, kind of round off your corners. You don't want any sharp corners on a cast iron block because it cracks easier that way. You can see that I put some tape over the oil holes on the main journals just for added protection to keep the metal out. Now we're still going to have to hose down this whole block, blow it, oil it, dry it, and then we can assemble it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do with our block after it's nice and clean and ready to be assembled is we install our main bearings here. And if you're not sure which piece goes into the block, you see little oil passages there. You match those up with oil passages on your main bearing. That's how you know which half goes at the bottom and which goes at the top. Line those up, get alignment ears, and make sure they're pressed in flat and level on each side. After you press in your main bearings, you can give it a little tap even with the hammer just to make sure it's flush on both sides so less chance of it spinning and getting out of whack all right after we get our main bearings in we're going to grab our nice new tube of motor assembly grease and lube up our main bearings of course after you do a couple hundred motors uh, the tube ends up looking like this and it's time to get a new one On your main bearing, you just need a little bit of assembly lube like so. Make sure you spread it nice and even with your finger. And that one's ready to go. It's very important when you install your crank, all the journals are clean. This still has lube on it from when we test fit it earlier. And make sure you drop it in straight. Make sure everything's smooth close and turn smoothly just like so. You don't want to damage the crank. Okay we've got most of our main caps in. Now we just need to put our last one in. If you're wondering which way they go, match up the little ear on the bearing with the ear on the half that's in the block. This one is stamped number two. It also has a little arrow pointing forward. So that should tell us where we're going. We've got our white assembly lube on here, a couple drops of engine oil on the threads. Line it up. Give it a little tap. Center it up. Get our bolt started. Zip it down with a 3 8 gun. And then Using our cheat sheet, we see that we need to torque it to 70 foot-pounds. So we get our trusty torque wrench, 
Set at 70 foot pounds. Wait for that big click right there. That tells us we're at 70 foot pounds. Now we know that everything, all the main caps are on, they're torqued down. Now we can use our plastic gauge and check our mains and make sure the bearings are going to fit right. Okay, this little piece of spooge on our crank is called plastic gauge. Comes in paper like this, and it's basically like a dental floss, wax covered dental floss. What it does is it goes on our main journal, and then we put on our main cap. We're going to tighten it down, and it'll compress that, and we're going to measure it to see what kind of clearance we have on our main bearings. Okay, we installed our main cap, and we torqued it down. Now we're going to take it back off. Okay. We're going to remove our main cap. Okay, here's our little plastic gauge spooge stain after we've taken the main bearing cap back off. And what we do is we put our little plastic gauge gauge next to it and we measure it. And how much that compresses and squashes out tells us how many thousandths of an inch we have clearance on our bearings. And ideally, we want this to be between the largest setting and the smallest setting. As you can see, it's pretty much just to the max, so we're going to clearance it just a little bit. Okay, in order to loosen up this bearing a little bit and get a couple, just a half a thousandths more clearance, we're going to make sure the bearing is clean, wipe down, use a brand new piece of scratch bright. I know it's called Scotch Bright, but Scotch Bright is trademarked and Scratch Bright sounds funnier. And what we're going to do is we're going to do nice even strokes all the way end to end on our bearing. We're going to count about 30 to 50 strokes just to clearance that. And we're going to plastic gauge it again, check it until we have the proper clearance. Okay, make sure you get the assembly lube and grease off the crank. Get the old plastic gauge off with your thumbnail. Make sure it's all clean before you put the new plastic gauge on and check it again. Put your new piece of plastic gauge on your main journal on your crank. Make sure it's in the middle at the top and in the middle left to right to get a good even compression and to check your clearance. Make sure you have the correct number main bearing cap. This is a number two. Make sure your arrow is pointed forward. Make sure that your tab lines up with the tab on the block. And install it. Make sure you use just a couple drops of engine oil on your main bearing cap bolts before you put them in. When you line them up and install them, anytime I put any bolts in I always back thread them until you hear that click and then thread them forward. 99.999% of the time that keeps you from cross threading or stripping your bolts. Make sure you tighten up your bolts evenly left and right. You don't want to just crank it down on one side. You want to go back and forth evenly and crank it down to the set torque and you'll hear that big click right there. Then you know it's all torqued down. It's even. You can take off the cap now and check it. Remove your main cap bolts. cap and we're going to check that little bugger again.
Okay, here's your plastic gauge spooge stain again. See it's not quite as wide. We're going to put our measuring dude on there. And it's just about at the max tolerance, so it should be safe to go. Make sure it's not wider than this. Make sure it's not skinnier than the smallest part. We'll clean this off with our thumbnail. Lube it up. Move on to the next one. Make sure you do this and repeat this procedure with each main cap because you never know what kind of machine work's been done. You don't know what kind of crank you got. You don't know what kind of shape the bearings are in, even if they're new. Normally, if it's a brand new crank, brand new bearings, everything should match up. It should be fine on the first time, but you still want to check this with your plastic gauge so you don't regret it later down the road when the crank falls out or starts knocking or you have all kinds of other problems. Something I like to do whenever I torque bolts down for the final time or adjust valves, rockers, whatever, is I like to take my little sharpie and I just like to make a line across here and that lets me know, in case I forget, that I have torqued these bolts. That takes all the guesswork out of it and you don't lose track of anything. Here you can see we have a nice pattern on our front main journal with our plastic gauge and as we put our scale on here we can see that it's just a hair inside which means it's in within tolerance which means we do not have to clearance this main we can just put it together that's the reason why you check every single main every single rod because they're not all necessarily exactly the same here are a couple of side notes in case you are wondering um, if you've heard the term two bolt and four bolt main or four bolt block what it refers to are these main bearing caps right here. You'll notice there's two bolts holding this main bearing cap. If this were a stronger and a little better four bolt main, these caps, this cast part right here, would be a little bit wider out to here, and it would have smaller bolts like this, and you would have four bolts holding this main cap on. And that would only be the three middle caps, the front, and rear main would still be a two bolt. Also on this, you'll notice these tall studs or bolts right here that are sticking out. What those are for is this engine came with what is called a windage tray. What that does is that keeps the oil from sloshing around and it lines up like that. The hole lines up with where the dipstick goes. The back hole is gonna line up with the oil pump uh, when you put that in but we're not doing that on this engine that's just a little FYI tidbit for you